so that we can, you can have this. There we go. Look at all these amazing faces. Lynn Sutton, how are you? Douglas I'm Hartford. Hey, David. Our, our award-winning photographer, Miss Helen DeWorst, the latest person to be celebrated for certification. Julia, how are you? Hello. You're muted for now, and that's good. Actually, during the presentation, I'm going to ask that uh, people do put their stuff on mute, uh, just in case a dog starts barking or, you know, a spouse starts telling you how much they love you and they might embarrass themselves or, um, you know, whatever happens. Mr. Daryl, you've got your new dog with you from Clive, mm -hmm. Alberta. Do we get a facial view of the dog? He's like, oh, so you oh. need to turn your chair. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh, oh, that's awesome. I like yeah. it. Daryl picked that up in the same little farm town. Who knew that my mother in law lives in, in Clive, Alberta, just outside of Lacombe? So, uh, when he said he was little, going little to Clive, better lighting, yeah, that's uh, that's great. Grace Wall, how are you? Good. Super mom, photographer, and Halloween guru, yep, and now apprentice welder. <laughs> yes, mm, fun. And I, apprentice welder. I cannot wait to see the welding photography that you do. That that could be spectacular. You just have to be careful, like shooting an eclipse, you have to be careful for your equipment. That's what I thought <laughs> I would ask some questions about that today. Go you know, like what yeah. would you put on front of your lens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna admit some more people here. Jen, how are you? Stacy, Stacy. Duran Duran. I Hello. like it. Hello, glad you could make it. Jerry Ann, <laughs> long time no see. Yeah. Kevin, awesome to see you. Uh, we've got Sheila, we've got Jacob Rainey. Jacob if, uh, is part of our photography and focus program right now. He is an amazing race car photographer. His ability to stop race cars and blur out the background is bar none the best I've seen. And oh, I'm I'm encouraging him to do a calendar. Cindy, Nevada, got to like it. Susan, uh, Brooke and Diane, people are coming in. Rita's coming in. That's awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to watch the room, but I want to do an introduction. On Well, at least on my screen, he's top left in uh, a beautiful blue shirt, uh, waving his hand. He's, he's got, we kind of share similar hair, which is kind of cool. We're brothers that way. We still got some curls on top, which is neat. Um, is Mr. Will Prentice. Will, welcome. And thank you for doing this. Oh, um, thanks. Yeah. So um, I, I, I love, you know, for an introduction, I, I love, I'm just going to take it off his LinkedIn profile. It says, you know, Will Prentice is a weathered and spiced photographer. So Will, what spices? Oh, everything, garlic with everything for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't it can, have flavor, I don't eat it. You got it. Um, you're a marketing social media leader. You're a brand manager for Amplis Photo, amplis.com, A-M-P-L-I-S.com. Uh, you write for Canada's last photography magazine, Photo News. You're a contributor. Um, and then I love these things. It says, you know, you're an expert in studio lighting, photography equipment with a solid foundation in, get these two, three things, graphic design, relationship building, and education. Now, the, the first and the last makes sense. Um, and the middle one does for me too, but some people might go, why is he putting relationship building in there? Yeah. So to me, I think that's the most important thing, no matter what your role is, whether it's photography or just in life in general, how people, how you make people feel affects their impression of you. So especially nowadays with all of the political strife in the world, you know, let's just make everybody feel good about uh, about themselves and uh, you know feel good about working with you. Yeah, that's great. I like it. I'm with you. With so, you, yes. Yeah, I am. So uh, what I'd like you uh, to do is before we get into a presentation that you've done for us, the sun has no feelings. It shines no matter what. <laughs> and so uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm looking forward to this presentation. Uh, just a quick thing. When did you start photography? What got you into the bug? So I started professionally almost 30 years ago. Um, I got the bug when I was a kid. So <laughs> this is, uh, my dad will never let me live this down. Um, we used to have this sports and cultural exchange with a U.S. city. 
So I grew up in Peterborough, Ontario, and we were twinned with a Michigan city. My dad gave me a camera with a roll of film, and he wanted me to take pictures once I got to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yep. But on the bus trip, I kept seeing all these really cool shapes in the clouds, and I wound up blowing through an entire roll of 24 exposure film, shooting nice. pictures of the clouds. Yes. So, yeah, blowing my through, nuts. Blowing through a roll of film is much more expensive than blowing through um, the space on a digital card. <laughs> Nowadays, yes. Back then, this was 40, 50 years ago. So, yeah, yeah 45 okay. years ago. Yeah, it was a little cheaper then. <laughs> There we go. So, Will, thank you. I know everyone's anxious. We've got this huge event, April the 8th, a total eclipse of the heart, no, of the moon, sun, total eclipse, solar eclipse coming up on April the 8th. Um, and uh, you've shot them, which is why I'm grateful that you can share your experience. I'll let you go ahead, give you the stage. You've got a presentation you put together. You can share your screen and okay. uh, take her away, my friend. And then if there's questions, put them in the chat and I'll watch the chat. So for all of you watching, uh, if there's questions, just put it in the chat and I will uh, then do a little bit of a Q&A with Will if he hasn't answered those questions uh, during the presentation. Yeah, for sure. And I've got uh, time as well uh, built into this. Uh, so uh, when I do these presentations, because I work for a company that sells equipment, um, I'm often asked by, and David didn't ask this surprisingly, but um, I just want to get this out here. This is not a sales presentation. I'm not going to tell you that you have to buy X brand or Y brand or whatever. I'll, this is more generic uh, with, and I'll tell you what I'm using, but uh, there are certainly equivalents. So don't think that I'm going to waste your time here and tell you that, uh, you know, you have to buy this and buy that. Awesome. So let's just pop in here. So quick agenda. Um, and this is one of my images from the last solar eclipse that we had. So I've popped a few of my images into this presentation. Um, so we'll go through this quickly. Safety, essential gear, uh, camera and lens choices, some settings for your camera, uh, picking your location and some useful tools to help with that. Preparation, which is really important. Uh, and yes, I used to be a scout, so... I'm all about preparation <laughs> and uh, things to do on the big day that, so that you don't forget. Uh, now, I will send this presentation to David so that he can share it with anybody who wants to download it as well. Um, so if you forget to take notes, that's OK. I'll send you the presentation and you can look at it. So um, quick intro about who I work for. Um, we distribute all of these products to camera stores across the country, coast to coast to coast. Um, there's a few more, but these are our, our key ones. And as David mentioned, we are um, the publishers of Photo News. So we're the only solely Canadian uh, source of photography news. We, Unlike all the other so-called Canadian companies, we don't bring in American writers. Um, some of our vendors might provide an article, but all of our content is Canadian. Um, and you may recognize some of these people in the image. Yeah, um, Peter David, is our, one of our instructors Peter, yeah. in Toronto. Yeah, he coaches yep. for Learn Photography in Toronto. So that's uh, that's awesome. And he's a great gentleman. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Um, so quickly, a little bit more about me. So my role is um, technically it's expanded now. I'm brand manager of pretty much all of the brands now um, at Amplis. So that means I look after marketing and boring sales stuff. So, yeah, I have to do Excel spreadsheets, but Every once in a while, I get to take cool photos. And the big bonus, I don't have to pay for my gear anymore. Woohoo! Yeah, that helps. Um, but I've been a landscape commercial and portrait photographer professionally now for almost 30 years. Or, yeah, almost 30. Um, I love that shot. Yeah, so do I. Thanks. And the funny thing with this image is people think that this is everywhere but where I actually took it. Because so many provincial parks and conservation areas have these amazing boardwalks. Yes. Um, this particular one is long gone. They ripped it out five, six years ago. So I can't even recreate this image if I wanted to. At that but you spot. captured it in memory. So that's awesome. Yep. Um, and then I've been um, working, also doing <laughs> photography education and training for many years. Um, I used to work for LifeTouch, the school photo company. So my job every August was to take 
30, 40, 50 regular people and turn them into photographers. And not just, you know, taking pictures of kids, but uh, I had two Canadian photographers of the year. So these are people who I trained who wound up taking the best images out of the entire year. So uh, as much as I've, I've won awards, and but I'm not going to talk about that because I'd rather talk about the people who've won awards from using information that I've given them. Um, oh. So I'm hoping that after you've taken images of the eclipse in a couple of weeks that you know, you've caught something from this that you uh, um, will remember. And if you want to tell me, hey, you remember you told me how to do such and such? Well, this is what it did for me. You know, I love that. I like to know that what I'm sharing is uh, making a difference for somebody. Um, and as mentioned, I'm with Photo News as well as Photo News TV. So if you're not sick of me by the end of this, um, it's a little more product focused, but I've got a lot of videos on Photo News TV on YouTube. Um, well. Let's jump into the fun. So uh, I always like to start with this. The most important part of any camera is the 12 inches behind it. And we have to remember that the camera is a tool. It doesn't matter whether it's Canon or Sony. Um, well, it really, it does. If you're not shooting Nikon, then it's all second best, but you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, all yeah. you Nikon users go, yeah. Yeah, it can even be this little thing with its multiple lenses, but you know, it. I may make a lot of fun of Canon and Sony people, but it's just in fun. I mean, it's really the tool. Um, so the most important part is that 12 inches behind that camera. So always remember that. Don't get caught up in what brand your, your gear is because the brand means nothing. And the funny thing is this quote is from a gentleman who everybody says, Oh, he would have hated Photoshop. Well, I hate to break it to you, but he spent more time in a dark room dodging and burning his images than most of us do in Photoshop doing the same thing. So yeah, uh, yes. he would have loved Photoshop. Um, now, I realize most of you are in Calgary, so you've probably seen the t-shirts at the camera store that say safety third. Um, Actually, I, I will I will say this. Well, this group is across North America, so oh, yeah, you thought, oh, awesome. You, you're talking to the um, the North American Free Trade Agreement here. So, oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. So, um, normally I wouldn't talk about safety this early in a presentation, but because it is a solar eclipse and there's some severe risk. I've got to put this up in big bold. I mean, if you're going to take away anything from this. Uh, this is the key thing. So I went on to good old Amazon and got my solar glasses, my eclipse glasses. I've tested them out. Uh, they are really dark, but um, I can look at the sun. And then I've also got the gear for my cameras. Uh, but you don't want to look at this with your bare eyes. Uh, I've talked to optometrists. You know, I wear glasses, so I've had these conversations many times. Glasses make it worse because they will concentrate the light into your eyes but you can really damage your eyes um, you can also damage your camera and lenses so every eclipse i can guarantee our service department's going to get a couple of dozen lenses that have melted inside because somebody thought oh i'll just quickly point and shoot but it doesn't take long for that extra concentrated light from a, an eclipse to damage your lens and your your camera uh, my friends at Nikon and Canon have all told me about sensors that have been burned uh, by the, the light from an eclipse. So please, please, please get the cheap. These were six bucks for two pair on Amazon. I know you can get 30 of them for 20 bucks now, um, but get yourself some glasses or learn how to make a pinhole camera. Uh, what that's should a fun they... way, of, especially if you have kids. What should they type in when they're looking for those glasses? They just type in eclipse glasses or what's the yep, best solar eclipse glasses. Um, they should be ISO. Uh, now it is from Amazon. So I sometimes question the validity of the ISO uh, uh, <laughs> certification on here, but I know they're pretty dark and I've, I tested them out carefully and I compared them to my solar filter and yeah, they're about the same darkness. So yeah, they look like ISO solar eclipse glasses. They look like good party glasses for a Friday night dance floor as well. You'd need a lot of light to see or you're going to trip over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do not dance with me wearing those. You'll lose your feet. 
even with the glasses and with the filters on your camera, it's a good idea not to stare at the sun the whole time. Um, I, I noticed today just testing out these glasses and looking through the filter. I could look, but then I could feel my eyes getting a little tired. Don't let your eyes get to that point. So put your glasses on, take a look, inspect it, and then just look away, look at something else. Um, now, here's the one caveat, which a lot of people don't realize. So um, for those who don't know, the, the eclipse is you've got the sun here, you've got the moon here, and we're viewing there. And the, the moon moves and blocks the light from the sun. Now, when that happens, you're going to see what's called, uh, you'll be able to see the corona of the sun, which is the fire around the outside. That light is maybe 5% of the intensity of the eclipse light. So you can actually remove your glasses and remove your filters to photograph that part of it. Uh, as long as you've got at least 99% coverage. And I'm going to share a, a website later on that will help you determine uh, what percentage of coverage you have. Um, and it'll also tell you how long. So that period of totality goes anywhere from uh, five minutes up to, I think it's two and a half, three minutes. So totality isn't something that's gone in the blink of an eye. There's Because the moon is significantly smaller than the sun, it does take some time to transit across. Uh, so this is the time to remove your glasses and remove your filters so that you can see that so if you're in that area with, with totality, this is going to be mind blowing. This is one thing I haven't seen, although I've seen a few eclipses, but uh, uh, just remember when you get to that point, you can get rid of all of your uh, filters and lenses. So um, essential gear, um, I put lenses and camera plural because this was my setup the last eclipse i had a wide angle lens on one camera i had a telephoto with a stack of teleconverters on my other camera um this time i'm yep. going to bring well and i had my cell phone but i'm also going to bring a third camera with another telephoto lens uh just for that totality period so what I've done here is my camera with the wide angle, I had set it to um, record every minute it would take an image. And then with the telephoto lens and the teleconverters, that's on a gimbal head so it can move freely and I was able to manually track the sun. Um, the tricky thing, and you'll see this in some of my images after, is this partial eclipse started at dusk, which was I think 5.30 in the morning, so I had to get up really early, and it tracked from sunrise, so it was a little trickier to shoot, but uh, I will have some tips for you later on on how to figure all this stuff out so you can get your location. Um, yeah, make sure you bring your smartphone. Um, don't zoom in on the eclipse unless you've got a solar filter for your smartphone, but if you're just taking a wide-angle image, quick shutter speed, you're going to be fine. Yep, don't forget your Eclipse glasses. Now, there are two things with this. So I happen to have, this is co actually called a solar Eclipse filter. It's an ND100,000, so 16 and a half stop. If you're going to photograph the Eclipse, this is the only filter to put on your camera. Now, this one's from Kenko, but there are other ones that you can find online. But if it's not 16 and a half stops, don't use it on your, your camera. You can use any combination of filters. So you can stack ND. So an ND10 and an ND6, you should be able to combine those. That'll give you about 16 stops. Um, I've read a lot of stuff lately about using welding glass and I'll share an image I took with um, welding glass later. It needs to be grade 14 or it's not dark enough and you're going to run the risk of damaging your your um, eyes and or your camera gear. So I have to ask our welder in the group, Tara, yeah. uh, um, Grace, not Tara. I know another wall. I know Tara wall and Grace wall. And I was just sent an email to Tara, but Grace, do you have these glasses? I have a welding cap, but I don't have, I don't think I have grade uh, 14. I think I only have grade 10 or 11. Oh. Yeah, okay. you need 14 to be able to use that. Um, now I did buy a square of grade 14 welding glass off Amazon. So I'm going to put that on my wide angle lens. 
Cool. Um, yep, good solid tripods because you're not going to want to handhold, especially the Eclipse takes about, I think it's four hours from start to finish totally. Uh, so you don't want to handhold a camera that long. And then uh, remote shutter release or timers. The ones I use are from Honol. They're just a simple button. And then you don't have to touch your gear. So uh, you can just hit the button. And because your camera's on the tripod, it's not going to move when you're using a remote shutter release. Um, or with the case of my wide angle camera, I just had it on timer and, and uh, let it do its thing. Um, and don't forget extra batteries because the last thing you want is for your camera to run out of juice right before the totality event. Uh, thank, this hasn't happened to me on this particular instance, but I do know people that have had that. So um, if you don't have batteries, you can go out and buy extra batteries. Um, there's also units that you can plug into your camera that you can plug into a, a larger battery uh, just to ensure it runs the whole time. So I'll have a, a 100 watt power delivery battery with me uh, with a tether tools adapter so that I can run my landscape camera nonstop without it shutting down. So I'm often asked, you know, what cameras and lenses should I use? So this is what I created with the images from my wide angle lens. Because it was on time lapse, I was able to uh, capture all these different steps of the eclipse as it was happening and then just merge them in Photoshop later. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting similar, but from start to finish with, with this next eclipse. Uh, because this one started, as you can see, right at the horizon with uh, most of the eclipse done. But Yes, uh, that's an yeah, amazing shot, Well, with... Thanks. Yeah, um, and I've got some tips on how to create this kind of image as well. But uh, you want to make sure that your camera has manual mode. You don't want to shoot in green auto because auto is going to make a muddy mess of your images. Because as smart as your camera is, and let's be fair, cameras now have more computer in them than camera. I'd say they're 90% computer and they're more powerful than our laptops were 10 years ago. But don't rely on the smarts of your camera. This is where we need to rely on the smarts of that 12 inches behind the camera. So pop your camera in manual mode, get your, your right filters. Um, it's also a good idea to do a bit of research ahead of time. Take a look at other Eclipse photos. Just go on Google and search Eclipse photos and see what other people have done in the past to see what you'd like to try and create or what you would like to improve upon because there's you know, no image is 100% to what we all like. And, um, you'll f and find a photographer to follow who will share how they captured their image. When I go on Flickr and somebody's removed all of their EXIF data so you can't see their shutter speed or their any of their settings, I tend to not follow that person and ignore them. I'll move on to somebody who's willing to share how they captured an image and, and what equipment they used and what settings. Because as David and I, I think we both share this immensely, we want to share what we know. Because hoarding knowledge has got to be one of the stupidest things that people can do. Uh, yeah. What we share can help others create new things, and that's far more um, rewarding than it is just hoarding information. I just don't understand that. So uh, take a look at what others have done. See what you want to create. And yeah, bring more than one camera because you're going to create one image and you're going to think, oh, I wish I could have shot that. So that's why I'll have at least three. I may actually try and borrow a couple more. Um, so camera settings, uh, keep your ISO at its lowest setting. From what I recall, this eclipse is going to happen in broad daylight for everybody. So it'll start, um, I know in Ontario, it starts around uh, two in the afternoon and goes through. So I think most of us, it's well after sunrise at least. So you wanna keep your ISO at its base setting. The main reason, and by base, I mean your lowest number. So if you have an ISO of low minus one, that's not a base ISO. Uh, if you have an ISO of 64, that's your lowest number, set that, or it might be ISO 100. Uh, there is one caveat. Fuji cameras don't shoot raw at their lowest base ISO. So you'll be able to select ISO 100, but it'll only shoot JPEG. So you want to shoot raw and go to whatever your lowest ISO that you can shoot raw. 
Wow. That, that gives you the most information on your sensor. Your dynamic range is the widest. Um, so that's where I suggest your ISO is. Aperture, most lenses are sharpest f8 to f16, so you want to set your aperture somewhere in there to suit the image you're trying to create. And then shutter speed. So these are going to change. With a telephoto lens, because the view is so tight on the sun, um, especially when I go and stack three teleconverters on a 600 mil lens, um, you're going to find though, I was shooting, I think F45 because of all those teleconverters. So your shutter speed though, you want to make sure your highlights aren't blown out, but you're looking at fairly slow shutter speeds with a telephoto. With the landscape lens, you're able to get faster shutter speeds because you're capturing so much more of the scene than just that little dot of the sun. Now, speaking of shutter speed, so I've had a photographer tell me that he shot the last eclipse without uh, filters and used one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. And I don't recommend that because even at that fast of a shutter speed, there's still too much light from the sun from the eclipse because the eclipse increases the amount of light coming into your camera. So it's a pretty precarious situation to try and shoot that at a faster shutter speed. And I've had the guys at the camera companies, the technicians tell me, this is what people have tried to do. And then this is how their sensor has burned. So make sure you've got your filter on there. You can still use fast shutter speeds. Uh, now, I'm also going to bracket my shutter speed. So that means that I set the camera to do two images. Uh, so I press the shutter twice. So the first press of the shutter is at the setting I've set, say, one two hundredth of a second at F8. And then my next shot is going to um, underexpose that by three stops. And what that does is gets more information in the highlighted areas so that I can balance this later in Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, whatever software I'm using, uh, just to give me a more natural exposure of the two images. Because this, these are really challenging because the sun is so bright and depending where you are, you may have a foreground that's in a lot of shadow. So bracketing your shutter speed is going to help you capture all that detail. Um, you're also gonna wanna read your histogram um, and adjust your shutter speed because you don't want to blow out any of your highlights. Now, shout out to Nikon, but if you underexpose, you can recover five stops of information with a Nikon camera. Um, sorry, Canon, but you can't recover quite that much. But uh, seriously, know the, know the limits of your camera um, and read your histogram so that you can adjust your shutter speed. You don't want to be clipping at the end. I, I think David's done classes on histograms before. Um, if you're not sure, you can always shoot me an email later or um, uh, just look up Google how to read your histogram. Uh, it's not hard, but it is definitely important, especially in this situation. So some useful tips. So that last eclipse, that was my view as it was uh, rising, just shot with the cell phone. Um, so this website, time and date, Let's see if I can share that screen now. I want to change that over. Um, I might have to just reshare. No ah, problem. Here, here we go. So can everybody, ah, yep. So this is a map showing the path of the eclipse. So the area in red is uh, totality right around the dotted line. And then it's less and less of an effect as you go out. Now, the cool thing with this map, if I zoom in, so let's pick, well, Indianapolis is right here. So if I click on Indianapolis, it now gives me information. So total solar eclipse, that means the lucky people in Indiana, Indianapolis will have 100% coverage. They'll have full totality. For three minutes and 51 seconds, the moon will block the sun. And the total eclipse is going to run two and a half hours. So this tells you when it starts and when it ends. So this website, and I'll make sure David sends this out to you. This is really useful because you can go to anywhere in the world. So if we want to go to Calgary, 
Um, they're only going to get 26% obscuration, so not even as much as I had on the last one. Um, and the duration of the total eclipse is going to be just under two hours. So I would not fly to Calgary to photograph the eclipse. <laughs> Come on, Alberta's calling, Will. I know. Well, I'm actually <laughs> going to be in Calgary next week, and then Edmonton, then Vancouver, then Victoria, and I have to fly back to Toronto the morning of the eclipse. So I oh, better wow. get some sleep on that plane because then I have to drive to my location to uh, to photograph it. So I'm going to be somewhere out uh, this way to get 100% totality. So I need to be there at two in the afternoon. So I'll, I'll have some time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this website is, is absolutely brilliant for uh, tracking this. It. So I'll make sure that everyone gets this. Yeah. Hey, I'm not going to be in sleep. And let's just come back here. Where'd that go? Oh, right here. So before I shoot anything landscape and especially eclipses, I go and scout my location. Um, so I've looked online. I've used Google Maps and Google Earth to look at some spots. I'm going to drive out this weekend and uh, take a look at a couple of the spots I've chosen. Uh, a lot of people around here are going to Niagara Falls, so I'm going to avoid Niagara Falls. I don't want to be stuck there with 5,000 other people or more. Um, no, that's just not my idea of fun. Yeah. It would be a gorgeous shot otherwise, but yes, 5,000 people isn't fun. Yeah, So, but here's the thing. I've also looked at this. Uh, so this app, TPE, it's called the Photographer's Ephemeris. This lets you see the path of the sun and the moon. Niagara Falls is, isn't going to be the best because the eclipse isn't going to happen over the nice horseshoe falls. It's going to happen over the less attractive American falls. <laughs> so I'm quite happy not going to Niagara Falls now. Um, so this app's on my phone. Um, take a look at this one because, yeah, it tells you, it shows you the whole path of the sun and moon at any point on the earth and you can set any date and time. So I use this for sunrise and sunset photos for moonrise and moonset. Um, yeah, it's a very handy app. Uh, when my wife and I, we go away every July to our uh, family cottage and we love to paddle out at night to catch both the sunset and the moonrise. So I use this app to know when and where so that we schedule our kayak trip into the lake to go catch all of this. Nice. So it's a pretty handy app. Nice. Um, I also use Google Earth so that I can kind of preview what a, an area looks like, what a scene looks like. And then the other app that I use is called Stellarium. And this complements Photographer's Ephemeris and Google Earth because it combines both of them. And if you um, load Stellarium and go to the date of the eclipse, it actually shows the eclipse on your phone or there is a computer version as well. Uh, so you can track how the sun is moving through the sky and how the moon's moving. Uh, but it just doesn't give you the, the look of your particular location. It only shows you what's in the sky. So you kind of need to use all three of these to, to pick your location, uh, which is how I came up with the location for this last one, because I wanted, you know, reflections over the water and, and whatnot. So preparation. Make sure you test everything before you go out. You know, Boy Scouts promise. Um, you know, uh, I, that's why I tested out my uh, glasses. I was out using my solar filter a couple of days ago, taking pictures of the sun. There's some really cool sunspots. You can see that on my Instagram. Uh, but just test everything out so that you're comfortable with it before the big day. Because the last thing you want is to be set up and then start fumbling with your gear to get the image. So test everything out ahead of time. So night before, this is a really good checklist. Charge all your batteries. Um, clean everything, including your sensor, if you know how. If you don't know how to clean your sensor, uh, then get it into your camera store, I would say now, because they're starting to get backed up on this. Um, if you want to do it yourself, Amplis does sell products that uh, you can use to clean your sensor. But uh, yeah, you want to make sure everything's clean and ready to go. Make sure all your quick releases are attached to your for your tripods and then create your own checklist with everything that you need and load up your bags the night before so you're not scrambling the day of. 
And don't forget to pack your tripod. So get everything and put it at the front door or wherever you're going to remember it, wherever you might trip over it. Uh, but just make sure everything's there and ready to go. Um, I do this before every shoot, not just eclipses, but when I'm going out to do a portrait session, I've got everything loaded, charged, you know, checklist, everything's there so that, uh, you know, I'm not forgetting things. Because, you know, David and I were talking about this before. When it comes to technology, what can go wrong invariably will go wrong. And since all of this is all technology for the most part, you want to, you know, do your best to reduce your risk. So get it all clean, get it all charged, get it all packed, um, and then have it ready to go. Because the morning of, you want to get your big coffee and you want to get your breakfast and then you want to be out the door. Because um, even though the eclipse doesn't start until two, you want to get your spot before other people get there. So yeah, on the day of, get there early. Uh, when I got to this particular spot, I was there, uh, this was 5.30, 5.45, it started. I was there at five o'clock. And within 10 minutes, I had people lined up either side of me and, and then eventually they moved on. Uh, get all your gear set up before it starts and keep it secure because especially when you have multiple cameras, uh, depending where you live, this particular location I was at was not the nicest neighborhood. I won't travel there at night. So I made sure that I had my camera bags attached to my tripods. So nobody's getting away with anything without me being able to intervene. But, uh, you know, keep it all safe and secure. Get your timers programmed first thing. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have, if you're starting early. Um, oh, and one thing I'll add to my checklist is format all your memory cards too. Make sure those are ready to go. I'll pop that in the list. Um, so take some photos before the start. Uh, that image that I created with the, the steps of the eclipse, I actually kept the starting image as my base image and then blended in all of the steps on top of that one because that image had a more dramatic sky. If I tried blending them all, then things were getting a little muddy because of the varying exposures. And you're going to find that once you get to totality, the sky gets really dark. So you're going to get a lot of variations in your exposure. So have a nice base exposure before it starts, which you can use as a reference image if you want to create that progression uh, image later in Photoshop. Um, and this is a big one. It, it really helps to share images. So this particular, the image here is my Nikon Z6 with the solar filter and the, the telephoto and the stack of teleconverters. And I had people coming up to me who didn't, they weren't prepared. They didn't have glasses and they wanted to see the eclipse. So, and a lot of it was, you know, parents with their kids. So I kept this live view up and let them see it. You know, it, as long as they don't touch it, I'm fine with that. And, you know, people are pretty good. If you say, yeah, take a look at the back of the camera, just please don't touch it, but, you know, go ahead and take a look. I love the reaction of kids when they see something cool and neat and new that, you know, the next eclipse like this is 20 some years for us. So some of us may not see another one, I hate to say it, but, you know, kids are just learning this stuff. So share this with them. Um, there's nothing wrong with somebody looking through your viewfinder as long as it's on your terms, but, uh, yeah, go ahead and share right away and let others experience this magic. These really are cool events. So, Love that, Well, yeah. um, And as I mentioned earlier, make sure you remove those filters during totality or you're going to miss uh, the really cool show. Which So this eclipse, I didn't get to photograph or we didn't get to see totality, but the previous one, uh, my uncle actually flew to the States to photograph it. And the images he got during totality are mind-blowing, so... Uh, I can't wait to see that. Um, and then don't forget to look around you. It's not all about your cameras and your lenses and what's in there, uh, especially during totality, because you've got two, three, four minutes. So look around, look behind you to see what's going on behind you. Uh, if there's light filtering through the trees, they almost work as a pinhole camera. So you're going to see some cool things in the ground below you as well. So uh, really take in this whole experience because it really is... Uh, you know, for a lot of us, it's a once in a lifetime thing. And uh, yeah, take it all in. Just look all around and get your images that you want, but 
don't forget to look all around you and, and enjoy the whole thing. And then share your photos afterwards because so many people are dying to see this. And, you know, that, that red line, that dashed line is really thin. So, you know, it may be going through North America, but there's going to be a lot of people who aren't going to experience the same thing that some of us are. So, you know, make sure you throw up some images on your social media, even if you just share them with your family so they can see it. But uh, uh, Eclipse images, they always blow up all over the place because they are so cool. So, um, this image was taken with welding glass uh, back in 2017. So that's the difference between what you get with a proper solar filter and welding glass, the green tinge. and um, This one actually wound up with a bit of a double exposure. There was a reflection in my lens, but uh, now you can still create some cool stuff. I love it. Thank you, Will. That was amazing. Oh my, and we can open pleasure. it up like this screen says to questions. So maybe stop sharing and we'll see everybody's faces and yep. and uh, and then just open the floor, gang. Uh, any questions that you might have? Hello, Brooke. I didn't see you before. Who else is there that I didn't see? Karen's come on. Some new faces. Lauren, good to see you. Yeah. So um, shout it out. Anybody have a question or raise your hand? Helen, yeah. go for it. Um, okay. In Calgary, we're only going to get a little fraction of the eclipse. Is it still worth trying to photograph? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, that last image I shared, that was about 45% totality. You're still going to get a chunk of the sun missing. So if you get the right background, you can create a really cool image even with that. Cool. Anybody else? Any questions for a while? Yes, Julia. I was wondering, I was in totality during the 2017 and I had about two and a half minutes and, and yes, it is really cool to look around, but my photos turned out white. They didn't have the reddish, orangish look. What was the difference? Um, do you have a picture you can show me? I can, I'll, I'll find one here. Okay. Yeah, yeah find one and we'll ask, we'll let the next question come up. You find it, Julia, and then I've, it's enabled to share for anyone. So if you can share it, that'd be awesome. So take your yeah. time. Who has uh, the next Jacob question? Jacob asked a question in the chat, which is, if I only want to take pictures of totality, then I don't need a filter. And that is correct. Yeah. Uh, Just... Yeah. That's great. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what, yes. Kind of, what kind of filter? I mean, I know you gave us like the, it needs to be an ND100,000, but it, um, is there any like specific brand or anything that would be easy, not so, ex not too expensive since it's just one time use kind of, I guess. Right. Um, so the one I have is from Kanko because that's the brand we carry. Uh, there are cheaper ones, but you, with any camera equipment, you want to be careful with the cheaper stuff because it could damage your gear. Um, you, I think there's some stuff on Amazon you can get, but you want to get at least some combination of 16 stops. So what you might find more useful is, say, an ND10,000 uh, or an ND10 and uh, an ND6 that you can combine to make 16 stops, that would also work. Okay. And then you can use them separately. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And there are other things you can do. A lot of people think, oh, I can only use this for photographing the sun, but um, here's a challenge for you. Go out and shoot a 10 minute exposure with this filter and see what you create. Or even a five minute exposure. I've done some really cool images with ultra long exposures, especially with running water. It's, uh, um, yeah, it can be pretty cool. So they're not single. KF use. Concepts has a good sale on with their solar thing right now. If you log into their site, it's like 15% off. And they have that? the 30 uh, KF Concept. And uh, they've got some uh, ND3200 or 32,000s, which is 15 stops. So, Julia, that image doesn't look like it's at totality. That looks like it's. 
it was either, just before just before yeah, or just after but either yeah. way when i was taking them all of mine have the whitish look they don't have any reddish look yeah that could be just uh, the air quality or the like there well, was cirrus out there sorry there was cirrus out there okay yeah i can see a bit of cloud um but it looks that yeah, was midday if i recall too yes it was noonish one yeah. two so your images are going to be more white and more bluey that time of day the ones that i shot were first thing in the morning so it was that kind of golden hour um you could if you shot these raw though you could change that with a um with just a white balance um i did not shoot raw Oh. don't do that very often oh okay yeah because well if you're going to shoot jpeg you can set your white balance in camera to what you'd like to get but i would definitely recommend for this kind of event to shoot raw because it does capture more information and then in lightroom you can or whatever program you use to edit your images you can pull a bit more out of it that was the clouds during ah. during the during totality. Nice. Whereabouts are you? Um, Central Nebraska. Oh, nice. Okay. I think that's where I won't get to see totality went. this time, but I think no. I get about 75%. So that's not oh. too bad. Nope. That'll be pretty good. Thanks for sharing that, Julia. Awesome. Yeah, I think your exposures look good on those. You might have gone a third stop less, but overall, I'd say your exposure was pretty good because they are really tricky to shoot. Yeah. Didn't her very, very last one start to show color? She let, On the lower right-hand corner, that one began to show color. I don't know how to put them up again, but... And even JPEG, I mean, it's not as good to play with in say Lightroom but you can still do stuff oh yes yes you can still do a bit of editing but you're <laughs> you're really limiting how much you can edit mm -hmm. in JPEG right. especially if you're trying to recover anything from the shadows if you need to pull any data out of the shadows JPEG is the worst thing to use mm. Jerry Ann yeah you need to unmute yourself Let me just, I'll ask you to unmute. I'll get a prompt, hold on. I'll prompt you to unmute. So you should respond to the prompt. Okay. See, there, we, there we go. Now if I can remember my question. Okay, I'm gonna be in uh, Tyler, which is east of Dallas. And mm -hmm. I think that's pretty close to the, the totality path, maybe just a little bit off. Yep. And I think that the time frame of that one is somewhere around 1.30 or so. I, I don't remember. I haven't looked at it recently. So my 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 question is, um, in terms of, um, I've kind of forgotten. Because of the time of day, yep. this, is that going to make a difference in what we your settings you want to make? Yes. So I just looked up Tyler. So you're going to have a hundred percent obscuration um, wow. for about just under two minutes. Um, and it starts at 1220 and goes until three o'clock. So that's going to be thing. bright daylight. So you're going to want to be at, uh, think of your sunny 16 rule. You're going to be want, want to be at F16 uh, for the most part, probably one two fiftieth, one five hundredth of a second minimum. Um, depending on your filter, you will have to make some adjustments with your filter, but yeah, you're going to have, it's middle of the day there. So it's going to be hot and it's going to be, uh, uh, hopefully bright. And yeah. I, I haven't thing. looked, haven't looked at the weather. Um, yeah. We have to we're, keep we're our going, fingers crossed. <laughs> wait, my, my brother lives there and we we're, we're going to, uh, uh, niece's baptism. And I thought, oh, great. We'll just stay an extra day. <laughs> Yes. Good <laughs> yeah. for you. That's awesome. Any other questions? Well, we've got the man, Will Prentice, um, on the line. Yeah, could 
could you check your map there for uh, the Adirondacks? I'm going to be in Old Forge. Um, yeah, I love Forge. those. Old Forge, yeah, New York State. I love um, those apps. I'm going to check them out. Yvonne, you said you use one of them right now and you like it. Which one was that? What, the, uh, the ND thing? No, ND? The, the one app that you said that you used in the, in oh, the chat. Solarium. Yeah. yeah I like, you can, uh, you, it actually pops up with a little um, a map and it shows you where all, like, I use it for uh, astrophotography. Yes. You know, where all the stars are, where uh, the sun would be, where the moon would be which direction it's pretty handy cool so, so go ahead you mean old forge near scranton pennsylvania or no it's in new york it's in the adirondacks oh. in new york okay. and it's um uh, oh old forge new york here we go yeah okay so it is it'll have a you'll have a hundred percent for almost three minutes it starts at two just after two in the afternoon and goes until four thirty. wow Okay. Wow. Yep. So yes, That's you awesome. are on the path. <laughs> All right. So would you say the same type of thing since it's going to be in the afternoon, the F sixteen, and as far as the settings go? As long as it's sunny, yes. Yeah. Start at F sixteen and. Uh, okay. Yeah. And if we're cloudy. I'm if it's cloudy, it. then come down to F eleven, F eight, and you. Uh, okay. Yeah, you'll want to watch your shutter speed too. Okay, thank you. So, Will, is there a, a perfect city we should all fly to and party afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Newfoundland. <laughs> all right. I love it. Let, let's go for a gander. Oh, sorry. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. Oh, that was bad. Oh. That oh. One. <laughs> yeah, a gander's not going to get 100%, but uh, yeah, I think for scenic views, you couldn't beat Newfoundland, that's for sure. Dave, come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? Anybody other with towns they want uh, Will to check out for you? Yeah, um, and Julia was asking if an ND1000 and an ND2000 will be enough, and those will not be enough. Yeah. No, you need at least an ND. Uh, well, you want a total ND a hundred thousand, so um, a ten thousand, or yeah, an ND ten thousand and ND six thousand. They multiply, but uh, a one and a two only multiply to an ND three thousand. So that's definitely not dark enough. Good to know. You just saved a camera. <laughs> we'll, we'll print a saving cameras daily. I like it. All right, so let me just pop back to this. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and so there is all my relevant contact info. So if anybody wants to follow me or Photo News, you can find us on all of those different platforms. Um, and as I mentioned, I'll send this to David so he can uh, send it out to everyone. And That's awesome. We'll leave that up there for a little bit. Last chance, people. Any last questions? All right, Will, you rock. Yeah. Appreciate... Thanks, everyone. Yeah, Thank let's you. give him a round of applause. Yay. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you for you. sharing your knowledge and your passion and answering questions. You've been amazing. And so yeah, I, I just, know. this is my first time meeting Will live uh, as well. <laughs> and uh, if, when you're ever out in Calgary, I'm sure we'll connect more often after this. So you appreciate you, my friend. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Thanks, you everyone. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Bye. everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Good seeing you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Thank you, David. Bye.